In this video, I'm going to show you how I airbrushed this Grim Reaper artwork. It's airbrushed on canvas. The reference for this was created using AI. And I airbrushed this over a few days at the Summonats Car Festival whilst demonstrating on the Anest Awada trade stand. The whole artwork took around three and a half hours, but obviously at a show, I'm chatting to people, doing a bit of selling, talking about products, so that stretched out the time frame over the three days. Now you can see I started with a flesh tone to establish those bone areas, so you can use any particular flesh tone or mix one up using primary colours. I'll link up to a video in the description showing you exactly how to do that. And now I'm starting with a light blue. So this light blue is just made up of trident blue with white. And I'm spraying this blue in as a base color for all the areas of the cloak. Also using this blue for the flames coming off the back of him so again using that as a base color establishing where they're going to go you can see I've only got a rough sketch on the canvas I'm also using that blue as a bit of a glow on the side now switching to burnt sienna this is createx illustration colors and just using that color now to establish some of the browner elements within the image. You can see when cutting in and trying to control your overspray, I'm up nice and close, just moving that trigger finger back and forth very, very slightly, and then blending in. So as I get closer to what I call the safe zone, I can move further away from the surface and then dust it in, and that makes it easier to get even coverage and get that 50-50 overlap nice and accurate. So you can see just sort of sketching with the airbrush, mapping it in, so a little bit further away and then up close for any of the detailed areas. By doing this that way I can identify my detail when I do lose the pencil marks because the paint obviously eliminates them over time. And if you're interested to learn more about airbrushing, then you can definitely check out our online airbrushing course at airbrushasylum.thinkific.com. I'll also pop some links in the description below. The airbrush that I'm currently using is the Awada CMC Plus Micron. And this one runs a 0.23 mil needle nozzle setup. So it allows for nice fine detail as well as super smooth blending. Okay, now switching to magenta, also by Createx Illustration Colors. I'm going to blend over the top of that burnt sienna. And this will just shift the tone closer to what I'm looking for. Because these are transparent colors, they mix very easily on the surface. So by layering your tones, you can get all different types of variations to that particular color. Again, blending from a distance and then up close to just create those sharper details and those tighter shadows. 
you want to still control your overspray. And now switching to a dark blue, this is a trident blue that I already had mixed up. I'm going to use that to blend in the white areas of the hood as well as the cloak and then that'll match up to my light blue that I've already established. You can see I'm also slowly getting some of the texturing in there so don't be scared to do this in the earlier stages because this sort of stuff will build on your artwork and still become visible as you progress through the layers of colour. Again pulling some of those details out so that I know where they have to be and that helps to shape the artwork. Using that blue as well in the background and also to define some of the fire behind him, that blue flame. So just roughly mapping it in, very very rough at this stage. Okay, now I want to start adding some of the details into the artwork and for that I'm using a sepia brown or as some like to say sepia brown. You can see at this stage I'm up nice and close just to identify the eye socket. So I'm really getting that detail in there to start with. If you're not confident with that, then you can start in a different section which is not so crucial. But I like to start in the eye sockets, then do the nostril, and then go from there. And you can see I'm blending out again from those sharper areas. So I kind of move around with the design going from sharp to softer shading and then just start to blend it a bit more to get some shape into the artwork and then come back in with detailing. Continue on with the cloak and the hood. And just take your time with this step, just really shape it and do one section at a time and just really follow your reference image just to get it as accurate as possible. Again, adding in some of those textures to build on that as well. And as I'm going through the tones, you can see I'm gradually getting sharper. So trying to clean it up as I go. So when I start, it's very loose, you know, got more overspray, and now I'm just trying to clean the whole image up. Bring in some depth, add the details in, get it to look more like the reference image that you're working from.
And you can see here with the belt and all of that rib area, I'm adding in the detail and then I'm shading back over the top. So that's what I do quite regularly with artwork, just so that I don't lose everything and just don't blend it totally. Add the detail in first and then you can dust over the top with your shadows and then that detail is still visible underneath. It definitely makes your artwork look better and it also gives it a bit more realism. Now with the side just freehanding around those edges you can definitely use a mask if you're more comfortable with that. So now that my edges have been airbrushed in with those lines, I'm going to give it some depth by adding in some shading. And now doing another edge along the top of the side. I apologize for the out of focus but I still wanted to leave this bit in so that you could see it. Now bringing in some of that sepia into the background, adding in some trees and also the lantern. So now I'm going to work in some white. I'm just gradually going to brighten up some of the areas, add a bit of texture and highlights to it. And I like to do this before the final tone. That way the final tone, which is always usually darker, can clean up the white overspray that you get from doing some of these highlights. And it's quite inevitable that you're going to get that with the white unless you're super, super careful. And you can see I work over the white slowly. So I'll spray a bit on, let that dry, and then I'll come back to an area and brighten it back up again. I'm constantly using my double action, so keeping that air pressed down at all times. That will also help to dry the paint on the surface. And then you can work back over the top once that paint starts to crosslink. You'll also find that if the area is too white, and there isn't enough paint there, then the white's not going to really show up. So keep that in mind too. And you can really notice how quickly that white will create some more depth. So you've got your shading, you've got your highlights, it's starting to look a lot more three-dimensional now. And then I bring in that darker tone to really deepen all of the shadows and give you a bit more contrast. few highlights into the flames as well just to establish them a bit more as well the underlying layer and now using yellow I'm just gonna highlight the glow from the lantern and I add that to the flames and then also bring it into the background and I've now switched to orange the orange is going to blend nicely over that yellow and then I can bring a red in as well which will blend back into the orange I'm also using that orange to add some glow and highlights to bits of the skull and now I've got the red so then I can blend that back over the top of the orange and then that'll slowly blend into my blues. So now I'm using a blue violet and just slowly bringing that into the background now using a transparent black so mixing a transparent base with black so this will just make it a little less aggressive I'm going to start to really deepen and bring out all of those shadows and the detailing within the Grim Reaper 
This will also, as I mentioned earlier, help to clean up my white overspray and make my white highlights really pop. So now with this transparent black, I can really bring in all the texture as well, really shape the hood and the cloak from the Grim Reaper. You can see I've really detailed the skull now. And again, I work with the details first and then I blend out with my shadows from there. And I even revisit sections just to further detail them if I'm not happy. And what I also like to do is step back from my artwork at this stage and I'm looking at it as a whole, looking at all the highlights, the shadows. And now that I'm deepening those shadows, I like to squint my eyes and that way it'll blur out the detail and it'll show me if certain areas need to be darker or if I've gone too heavy in a certain section. Now you can really see how much depth is created now using this particular tone. Anything that I'm heavily shading is making other elements pop forward. So I'm getting that real sense of depth. Again, now that it's all detailed in that area, bringing my shading back over the top and pushing all of those areas back to make it look more three-dimensional. Bringing the detail to the lantern. Again, just up nice and close to shape it and then blending out. I'm not going totally over the top of it, so I'm still leaving some of that sepia brown in there. Adding some clouds in with that transparent black, and then further shaping those flames. Adding a little bit of a skull within the top of the psi. Adding in white highlights now to really pull out those flames and to clean up any of the white highlights that I need to. You can see I'm just sketching with it. A little bit on the clouds and then back onto the Reaper just to give it a bit more depth. Now using the cerulean blue and I'm blending back over some of those flames and also sections of the cloak. So by putting the white down this cerulean blue is transparent so that way I can just lay that over the top and it's going to sit nicely on those brighter sections. This obviously means that I have to then come back in and re-highlight some of the areas but I don't mind doing so. You can see how it's also going to a green 
over that yellow so you can mix the colors on the surface. Now using a red violet, I'm again further shaping it, adding in another blend of color and working that back over the top and again that shifting certain areas to more of a purple. Now back to white, but this time using my fire tool templates, I'm creating the final layer of fire over the top. So I've got my underpaintings that I've been going through and now I just want to have that more defined flame look so that that way you get that sense of depth and that's why I'm using the template. And using the white now to add that glow within the lantern and also shape it by adding in some highlights. Also some dot white highlights in the background. And coming back in with that template for the sigh. And now highlighting the belt buckle and back onto the skull. So you can see how much I'm moving around now within different elements of the design. So lots of little textures, bringing out real bright white highlights in certain areas that I want to stand out. And here is the completed Reaper artwork. Now you can get a real up close look at all the detail. And this artwork was airbrushed on an A3 size canvas. So to fast track your learning, you can definitely check out our online airbrushing course at airbrushasylum.thinkific.com or you can continue to watch some of the videos that I've got listed here. And until next time, go grab your airbrush, do some amazing artwork yourself and I'll see you again very, very soon in the next video. Thanks for watching. Bye for now.